I got a little, I got a special thing for you this morning. So you guys have all met Jasmine before, but you've never seen her tied up. You've never seen her attached to strings, right? So I always, I always wanted to do this. I felt like since I was talking about strings, this is perfect. High on a hill with a lonely goat herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lady hee Loud was the voice of a lonely goat herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lo. Stop! Stop, stop, stop. Um, what am I stopping? Well, you took my mouth away. <laughs> That's true, but I still have my voice. Okay. And I don't want to be tied up. But I've always wanted to do this. Because I think it's so fun, though, you know, do, 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 do. yeah, but I'm not liking it. So if you could let me out of here, that'd be great. And what's with this flipping my arms around? Well, you want to do your feet? Yeah, that's good. But I don't look like a ballerina. No, you don't. So here's my thought. What's your thought? Let me out of here and we can do this together. No. Okay, because you didn't ask me if I wanted to do this. You're right, I didn't. I just tied you up. I'm just kind of using you, huh? Yes, you are, and I would like my mouth back. Okay, well, I got a little clippers here. So we'll cut you free. Thank you very much. Oh, better already. Better. 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 Most best. Now give me my mouse back. Dress is getting a little tight there. That's not my problem. Oh, that's true. Okay, now what I'm thinking is you sing the verses and I'll sing the chorus. Okay. Is that good? Sound good to you? Yeah. Now, that's going to be good. Okay, I'm going to trust you. High on a hill on a lonely goat herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lay hee hoo. Loud was the voice of a lonely goat herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lay. Oh, ho, lady yoda, lay, oh, ho, ho, lady yoda, lay. Oh, ho, lady yoda, lay, do, lady yoda, lay, do, lay, lo, 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 lo. Folks in a town were quite remote herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lay e lusty and clear from the goat herd's throat herd, lady yoda, lady yoda, lay. Lo ho, lady yoda, lay, ho ho ho, lady yoda, lay, ho ho, lady yoda, lay, do, lady yoda, lay, do, lay, lo 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 la lo la lo 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 lo. See, better, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was definitely better. I made up that last part. Yeah, I noticed that. Very, very good. Okay, so what have we learned? Um, why don't you tell them what have we learned? Oh, okay. Well, what we've learned here is don't tie people up. Don't attach strings to people. They don't like it. Ooh. Yeah, I've never had anyone do that to me. Yeah, exactly. Now, the thing is, when I got to choose and you got to choose, it was better than you controlling me. Let's see if they agree. Do you agree with that? If anyone said no, fire them. <laughs> well, they don't work for me. Oh. Well, if anyone said no, I'll fire them. Okay, I think I saw them all say yes. Yep, that's good. Okay. Well, now that I'm free, I have lots to do, and I want to go so I can get those things done. So, oh, lo, lady, oh, little Lord, oh, lady, oh, little, lady, oh, little. Yeah, you know, you're taking chances. When you're playing with pets, right? You bring pets up front. You take chances. You bring the bring Jasmine with you. You never know what's going to happen there. So, generosity. I'm so excited when I knew that was your theme. Like, generosity. And I want to look at just four 
forms of generosity. I'm going to skip the monetary generosity because we talk a lot about, I mean, we kind of know, I think, about that idea of giving money and our resources and things like that. But I want to talk about four other kind of forms of generosity before I get into the no strings attached part. So one is mental generosity. And that has to do with your mindset and your attitude. And so it's amazing you think about, that's all kind of internal, but I can still give that away. And so on the negative side, however, though, I mean, I can be just as generous with my negative attitude, right, as I can with my positive. And so, you know, there are plenty of people who like to spread pessimism, judgmentalism, naysayism, right? And I don't necessarily enjoy being around them, but I have to tell you, I have been around them. And sometimes I've jumped in because it's super fun because you're picking on something, you have a you have a camaraderie around something, and so you kind of make fun. You're trying to laugh and ridicule something, and usually, I would say for the most part, I try to do it kind of in a harmless way, but I still think that energy, you know, you kind of feel like you're being harmless, that energy is going out into our universe. So the negativity of that, and so we actually are being generous with our negativity. Think about that. Is that what you want to be doing? I think a great example of that attitude is the Grinch. The Grinch stole Christmas. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, he's just a grump. I mean, I don't care, I mean, it's around Christmas, he really isn't like, but it's like if you see him, he's not like happy, like, woohoo, it's the 4th of July. Woohoo, Thanksgiving. No, he's just a grump and he's just grumpy at everybody and his whole attitude, you know, if you're just around that, it's just like it permeates and moves forward and moves out. So I think he's a good example of that. But on the other side of the negative, the positive. Why do we have the positive attitudes, the positive ways that we look at things, the mindset, the mindset of that I can grow, that I can develop, that I can forgive and I can love people. And this mindset they have um, that's hopeful, that creates hope for others. And then I think it's so funny that in that same movie, you have Cindy Lou Who, which I think is the uh, other side of that, where she's like, she's all chipper and her whole attitude is so positive no matter what movie that they've created their new Grinch in or whatever it is, she's still like this positive, you know, we're going to do it good and we're going to get this and we're going to make it all work. So I personally would prefer to be with the positive people. How about you? Going with the positive. Exactly. Right. I mean, who comes to church and go, oh, I'm going to go and I hope it's a downer. <laughs> I hope they have bad and sour things to say. So when I leave, I feel worse than when I got there. Not so much, right? Well, I love this. Um, and I just think it's cool that it's just the attitude thing. It's the internal thing that keeps us working. And that really can have an impact on our generosity of what we give to the world. And even the song of my song, I, I'm, you know, I, I want to give out love. I want to give out peace and let it just throw, flow through me. So if my attitude is that, those are the things that can flow. I worked um, for Family Peace Center in Honolulu. It was a company that did work um, with perpetrators and victims of domestic violence. And um, I love the powerful women that were leading that organization. And one of the things that they brought up was we talked about just how sometimes there's so much negativity out in the world towards women. And then like, I had to stop watching the show um, SVU, Special Victims Unit because there's so much violence against women in that show. And I know that they're trying to teach and train people to understand it, but it's like, I get it. And I like, I just don't wanna watch that violence over and over against women, because it's predominantly against women. It's not always, but it is predominantly against it. So I just put that on, I'm like, I just can't watch that. I watch all the other law and orders, right? Because they spread the violence around a little better. <laughs> That's not why I watch it. I like the, you know, trying to figure out stuff or whatever, but. But while I was working for um, Family Peace Center, there was kind of this moment we were talking about the B word and not using it because the attitude behind it, and I'm not going to say it, so you have to figure out whatever B word I'm talking about, but it's usually used towards women, right? So if men are angry or strong, they're like, oh, masculine. If women are angry or strong, they're the B word, right? So the word is used constantly really to put people down. And even in our youth today, oh my gosh, the, that word is just through the songs. And they're, they're looking at it like, well, you're like my pal, you know, like my girl pal, and that's what you call each other. But that's that's not where it's coming from. 
And so I just kind of made a, an, a kind of an oath to myself that I would never use that word again. I mean, I didn't use it really anyway, but I thought, I just don't want to. I'm not going to use that. And there's a, maybe a slew of some other words that get used. I'm just not going to use those for any, for any reason. I don't want to just have that negativity put out into the universe because we know energy moves everywhere. We know, we know that there's energy out there and it moves. And so I don't want to contribute to that negative energy. So positivity, positivity <laughs> begets positivity and negative vice versa. I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing, right? Um, I have a song called Colors of the Soul and it's, um, it's really that idea too, that it's like whatever we put out there, we can create good from it for putting the good out there. So that is what we're talking about. When we talk about mental, mental generosity. So it's really that inner, internal thing. So I'm going to move into verbal generosity and just slightly touch on this, but that's again, um, I think there's different forms, but the one that I'm going to look at is just the idea of affirmations. So verbal affirmations of people in the book, the five love languages, which I'm, a lot of people have read, one of the most significant ways that people show that they care about others is through the giving of affirmations. It's one of the five things. So if people give that, and that's important, then it's probably just as important that people want to hear that. So there's a mutuality of that. I find that I'm very, it's very easy for me to give affirmations. So I'm going to bring people around me that like to receive them. I like to hear them, but it's not my number one thing. Um, but I like to get them, but it's like, when I give the affirmations, it is simply a generous giving and there's no strings attached in the sense that I don't want the person to say anything back. I'm simply giving the affirmation because I want to build that person up. I want them to see themselves a little bigger, a little brighter. And so that's why I give the affirmation. So what kind of words do we share? very connected to our attitude, that internal part I just talked about, the words that come out of us are very connected to that. So if you find yourself, I was thinking about this because yesterday when I was watching the Husky Ducks game, right? I was just, you know, my partner and I, we just, we're just verbally try, you know, trying to crack each other up and stuff. And so I went kind of down this little negative route, you know, and I thought, this is funny that I'm doing this talk and I'm like, listen to me, that I'm using these little, you know, negative things to, to be funny with him, right? You know, and I said, but still, it's just a reminder that it's the energy. Is that the energy that I want to be putting out there? And it was harmless because there's, I'm not hurting anybody, right? And we're being funny. And so we're laughing, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, you know, in some ways, there's still energy going out there. Even if those people or those teams or whatever are not there, there's something that I'm putting out into the universe. I'm like, oh, I gotta stop because that's not what I wanna be doing, right? But we gotta get away from the judgmentalism, right? Because that's another attitude. When you just say, no, let's not judge myself and say, okay, bad person. Just say, oh, that's not what I wanna do. Let's just, I wanna change what I'm doing. So what, what kind of you know, words do you put out there? Um, I would, it's, it's amazing. I'm now coaching volleyball at um, Stillicum High School which is three minutes from the ferry I get off of, which is absolutely a blast. I never thought I would, a couple years ago, remember when I was walking around with my cane and everything? Now I am coaching volleyball again, which I, I think most of my life, more hours in volleyball than anything else I've ever done. So I'm coaching volleyball again and having the time of my life. And I don't care which high school I've ever been to, there's a kind of language that just flies around the high school. It's like, they're learning how to use the F word, the S word, the D word, the H word, you know, they use all of that in their talking. And I listen to them and I'm like, you, like they're, they're figuring out like how to use that word. Can I give you a bunch of really cool words that you could try to figure out how to use? Like, okay, everybody knows. I mean, that word isn't like, okay, special. You got to an age, all of a sudden you could use this, this series of words. Um, it doesn't make you sound smart doesn't, it doesn't, it's not positive in any way. It's just, it's usually negative energy that's coming from the words that they're using. And I just thought, oh, I wish I could have some kind of influence on that. You know, I would love to have, but, but I just think about what the, what if they were thinking about, is that what you want to put out in the universe? Is that the kind of, it's not the words per se, it's just that it's the, it's the way that it's being used. And 
you know, it's a, it's a negative thing. So that's their language. And, you know, it's, it's cool to them. And I totally get that. I was a teenager. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cuss though until I got into college. I put it off. Yeah. So a third one is social generosity. And, um, Again, in the book, Love Language, the idea of spending time with people, that's also one of the five things. And when I've done the five love languages with my career people, because I want students, my students to know, like how that impacts the job that they want to do, what's important to them and their relationships. And that's, that can be important. So if you're in a job and you want to be a firm, but you have a boss that doesn't do any of that, that might not be a good place for you. So, um, uh, so just an idea of, I was going to say with my students, I would say like almost 80% of my students all that fall into that one. That that is one of the first things to them is spending quality time with people that they love. And you think about that and like, that's what people want. And, and you, and you mentioned it as well, wanting people to be accepting, right? And that's all part of that. Social connections, we are actually created to be social beings. So whether we're introverted or extroverted, we are created to be social beings. So it doesn't mean I have to be up on the stage and enjoy that. No, there's some people like that. Some people don't. Some people want to sit over in the corner or something. You know, it's like that's but you still want to be social. You maybe have one or two close friends that you want to be with, but that's the way that we are created. And so when you think about your socialness, when you contribute to other people, you contribute conversations, you contribute your time spending with other people is a way of being generous. I think it was really interesting. There was a study too that did, you know, like we, people would go to counselors and they'd pay all this money to go to these counselors and then they would feel better. And then they found out that if you actually just went to friends and got to talk about the same thing with your friends, that you had the same, the same outcome and sometimes often better because that was a support person. That was someone that was going to follow through on that. It's one of the reasons my mom actually went into this thing about learning to be like a listening partner at her church. And it was so cute because then the next time I called her on the phone, she's like, yeah, well, tell me more about that. And I'm like, who is this again? No. Uh, but I absolutely love that. She became a really good listener, you know, but you having your friends listen to you and not tell you how to fix it. You know, that is quality time that you're spending with someone that is generous giving of your social time. And it's, it's healing, it's powerful, it empowers people. You know, during the pandemic, we had such a lack of connection. Um, there, are, I had friends who lived by themselves, and so they found themselves in an apartment, stuck in an apartment. I'm sure you could maybe get on Zoom and talk to friends. Yeah, and, and I, I, however long that shut down, six months or whatever, right? And then if I, even though things started opening up, you still couldn't like hang out with your buds. You know, so it was almost up to two years. And so, you know, coming back to a society, there's so many people that didn't know how to actually be social again. We had to kind of relearn that. I think we are getting into where we're learning how to do that. Watching high school students, oh my gosh, they did not know, you know, and it's like, oh, they, there was the, the anxiety levels are high again, because you don't know who's going to accept you, who's not going to accept you. So just that thing of being present with people is a gift, it's a generous gift that you have to give. So it, it's healthy. Um, I was, it made me think, I always like to think of the positive and the negative. So all of a sudden I went to like, you know, the healthy sharing, but there's also unhealthy sharing when I think of like sexual predators who groom people. I mean, I, you don't wanna get rid of that. That's someone who then is spreading the negative way of sharing time, right? And and that hurts people. So again, it's like, how do you want to spend your time um, socially with people? Are you building people up? Just being present, being listening, or being a good listener, um, being supportive. Those are the ways that when we spend time with each other, that builds people up. The fourth one I'm going to just touch on is uh, influential generosity. And that's when you're using your position, your prestige, your time, your talent, your resources, whatever, to advocate for change or to advocate for people who have less power. And, um, you know, in the Unity Church, that's something that's important to us is, is social change. Um, so that people, so that all people have the same access to benefits of sorts, right? And it's, it goes beyond equality. There's the equity 
element of it, which is that I'm going to create an environment where all people can thrive and an environment for these people to thrive is different maybe for an environment for these people to thrive. So where a lot of, um, I'd say white people have had this white privilege environment, there are people of color who are missing out on certain um, an environment that allows them to thrive. And so I love uh, corporations and colleges and stuff that are throwing money in that direction saying, okay, we're going to pay college for you, or we're going to pay for these, this nursing clinic or whatever for people of color so that we can lift them up. And I know, you know, I've got white friends, that go, that's just not fair. And I'm like, well, it's not an issue of fair. It's an issue of equity. We're trying to create a system so that everybody can raise up to be what they can be the best and what they want to be. And so when you talk about influential generosity, where are you contributing? Where do you want to contribute to, to raise the, the, the um, quality of someone else's life or to make change in our, in our world so that it's different? The beautiful prayer, um, beautiful prayer about peace. You know, just that is a, you're putting, that's a generosity of an influence on just putting that prayer out to create something wonderful, to, create, to hopefully create some kind of change. Um, Abu Baker, I didn't say his last, I don't know how to say his last name, but he's a wealthy trader and he was um, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad's chief advisor from 622 to 633. But I love what he said. He says, taking pains to remove the pains of others is the true essence of generosity. So taking pains to remove the pains of others is the true essence of generosity. And I think sometimes when we are influential or we are contributing, giving something, there is pain. There can be pain to it. But again, the pain that you're, you might be giving or experiencing is to raise up the quality of life for somebody else. And the idea of true generosity, when we start to connect that to the idea of strings attached, in any form of these, if we start to think of strings, it's like, it's exactly that. What am I expecting? If I give this, then I might get this. If I give love, I will get love. We all want to get and receive love. But when you give love just because you have it to give, that is a series of no strings attached. And I can assure you, you're going to get some kind of love back, but it may not look the way you want it to. And that's the part that's the difference is you are giving. And by giving with no strings attached, you are actually embracing contentment with what you have. Gratitude for what you already have. That's what you're embracing. You're, you'll be content giving that because you're not looking at what you're going to get back. And what you get back may be disappointing, may be more amazing than you ever expected, but you will be content with whatever it is because that's not why you're contributing. It's not why you're putting your, your positive energy out there. It's so that, oh, I'm going to be someone, I'm going to have these positive friends back. You're putting out there because that's what you want to contribute. Putting that positive energy out there makes a change. And that's what you want to contribute. Whatever you get back, like, that's a whole different thing. So there's freedom in not having those strings to it. There's a peace within you when you're not, when you can get release those expectations. And we talk a lot about release in the unity church, right? Every just releasing your expectations, releasing our control, releasing these things that we're hanging on to. Now it's okay to, I'm not, and I think that's different than having a dream, right? You can put your, but you can put your dream out there as well. But when you're, we're talking about generosity, the generosity that comes, that really flows through you and comes back and moves through the world is the generosity that doesn't have expectations tied to it. Um, I have a, my, my nephew, so it's my, my sister's son, his wife is um, creative and she's doing this like movie. She's putting together a movie, uh, independent film. She's out there creating it. She's written the script and she's doing all this and they're down in LA. They're, they're, they're very creative types and stuff. But for her to do this, she needed a, a budget of 15 or $18,000 or something like that. So she set up a GoFundMe, right? I'm looking at that going, that's a lot of money. But you know what? I, I'm throwing money in there. I like throwing 50 bucks. It's not very much money, but I'm not expecting anything back. It's like, oh my gosh, look at, I get to be a part of this project. She's allowing us to be part of this magnificent project that she's putting out there, you know? And so then every time she would send out a new thing about here's how, where I am on this, I would, I've given more money because I had more money to give. 
And every time I, and like I said, I'm not giving because I'm not expecting anything, but every time I give, I would get a message on my phone where she's like, you're going to make me cry. You, give, you know, it's the sweetest thing ever. And you go, oh my gosh, I never expected that. But what I got back was so worth it, you know? And then I thought, okay, when I do it again, you know, that's nice. No, it's the same thing. Every time, no matter what I'm giving, she's coming back with this, you know, genuine gratefulness for what I've done. And I'm like, that's, that to me is so pleasurable, but it's, I'm never looking for it and not expecting it. But I had no idea that's what would come back to us, to, to me. So when you think about your generosity, when you think about what, what you have going on inside of you, what comes out of your mouth, right? What comes out of what you're sharing? What, whatever that is. And then, of course, we all know the money thing. But again, we, t we so much is like, I, I've heard this a lot with um, New Thought, the we give and we will come back. And there's this focus that we're giving, so it's going to come back. But that's a string attached. You know, I mean, we want resources, but there is no studies out there that say the reasons the money that we make is makes us happier than having social friends, having people who listen to us, having people affirm us, those are the things that raise our quality of life. It's not about money. I mean, I can buy better clothes, but does it fill the emptiness? Does it create better relationships? I know millionaires who do not have good relationships with their spouses or their kids. So what do they really want? I'm not saying they don't or not. The money is not good or bad. That's the point I guess I'm saying. But it's not the thing that, that there's so many, there are often so much, there are so many strings attached to that. Um, sometimes in new thought, like if you get it put out there, it's going to come back to you. Well, you should be putting it out there because that's what you want to contribute. And whatever you get back is a blessing. But cut the strings, cut the expectations. They're, they're really not related. We want to think that they are. There are people that give and they get a lot back. There are other people who give the same amount or, you know, the widow and the, the widow's might in the Bible. She gives a little penny, but that's like giving a million dollars for someone who's really rich, right? And the, and the nowhere in that does it talk about, and you're going to get this back. It's like, no, she gave more because it came from her heart. They're talking about the attitude of that giving. It wasn't anything about, oh, and then she walked out and found a hundred dollar bill. That part's not in the story. It's looking at her heart. That's the focus on the heart of what you're giving. So the no strings attached when you're, uh, there's so much that we have to give. And the great thing about affirmations and listening and things like that is we never run out of those things. I'm going to run out of money some point. <laughs> There's times I have less, I have more. But I always have affirmations to give. I always have time I can give. You know, I always have love or positivity. Those things are never going to run out. I want to just close with a quick song. We'll go into a meditation. I read he touched the ungodly and defended women in shame in an age when hardly anyone dared. I also read he walked on water but his loving deeds and words say heaven walked on earth heaven walked on earth buddha taught much about suffering to overcome the power of pain giving up the family throne for good and through his life like Mahatma Gandhi peace became more than just words I say heaven walked on Heaven walks with every act of kindness, and heaven sees with every.
every thank you and please And if you do more than wonder How to end our hunger You walk in heavenly serves soup to the homeless. Isai sends money to his mom. Sui helps those who are challenged. Abdi tries to right the road. Heaven walks with every act of kindness, and heaven sees with every thank you and please. And if you do more than wonder how to end our hunger, you walk in heavenly peace. You walk in heavenly peace. Let's move into time of meditation. Closing our eyes and just breathing in the life of the air. The life that comes with the breath. Go ahead and find your internal, connect with your internal thoughts, your internal spirit. What is it choosing today? Love? in life. Let the richness of God's love fill you. Breathe it in. Let it become the center of who you are. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today, and I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing I'm choosing heaven today, I'm choosing peace today. I'm choosing peace today Cause I am walking this road of heaven right now Thinking I'm choosing peace today And so it is